One we use in investment analysis is the standard deviation. And it's a measure of the standalone risk of one particular asset. So if those distributions represent one stock, the expected value would be you know, where the peak is, the mean, and the standard deviation represents the dispersion around that expected value. Going back to your statistics, you may remember computing standard deviations. Formula, again, is pretty daunting looking with Greek symbols and superscripts, subscripts, and summations. Luckily, there is a very handy set of Excel functions that do the standard deviation for us. So let's look at this, the facts. Let's have this distribution and we're going to compute a few things. We're going to compute the expected return and also the standard deviation. We're actually going to skip the calculation of variance. If we were doing this by hand, the sequence would have been first do the expected value, then do the variance, and then do the standard deviation. But in this particular case, we can just use Excel and use the tool for, for which it was designed. Go to the second tab, and the first thing to notice is that we have probabilities and the returns. So if we did it the old-fashioned way, we would go equals the probability times the return, and we copy that all the way down, and then we do sum equals sum, and add those together, and we would come up with the expected rate of return is equal to 8.25%. Okay, so that's one result. We also could take a shortcut. We could do expected rate of return is equal to some product, some product. And we do the two arrays of the probability, comma, the return, close friends, and we end up uh, we end up with the same number. So if we expanded the digits, we'd see it as the same number. So either way works, obviously, just like we've seen in time value of money, there are different ways to arrive at the same result. Now the standard deviation will use the uh, first thing we have to determine is it is this population a sample or is this the exact distribution? I'll just write each one just to show you. So the standard deviation of the population, which means full results, we would use equals STDEV, and you'll notice that there it prompts you that there's a dot P dot S. So dot P is if we have the entire population, open parens, and then we would then put the numbers that represent the returns. And the standard deviation here it would be 18%. And it's a very small difference, I'll show you now. And here I'm going to modify it to be of a sample. And that would equal S S T D E V dot S for sample, open parens, same thing. What's the array of returns? Enter. So it is, and I'll increase the um, number of digits. And so if we had the entire population, it was 17.7%. And if we have a sample, the standard deviation would be 19.8%. In this particular case, we are no, these are considered to be uh, known uh, distributions, so we would use the population one, uh, which is 17.7%. Uh, All right. That is the standard deviation expected return. When we look at a normal distribution, this chart is pretty handy. This is the expected value right in the middle. One standard deviation account for 68% of the expected outcomes. And then when we go to two standard deviations, we will increase to 95.4% of all possible outcomes will be covered in two standard deviations. And if we go to three standard deviations, that would capture 99.74% of the expected results. So that's why we normally look at standard deviations as one standard deviation away, because within that range of high to low, we would capture 68% of all expected outcomes.